Hello everyone, welcome to ENT Uplifter. I am Dr. Mehek and I will be uh, talking about quenal atresia in this presentation. Now this topic can come as a short essay uh, for you guys. So I uh, will be covering this topic under following headings. First we will talk about introduction and pathophysiology of quenal atresia. Then we will talk about clinical features, then investigations and then treatment of quenal atresia. So, uh, quenal atresia is very rare and the incidence is 1 in 7000 live births mm -hmm. and they are complete obstruction of posterior quena on one or both the sides. Now, this quenal atresia can be either bony or membranous or mixed and the mixed one is the most common that is seen in 70% of the cases and it is believed to be secondary uh, to persistence of uh, nasobuccal membrane. Now the, we have spoken about this membrane in uh, development of nose. So whenever this comes as a question, you if it is a long question or or even if it or e, if it carries ten marks, then you have to talk about that part of development of nose also that includes uh, nasobuccal membrane. So um, now talking about the clinical features. Now, quenal atresia can be unilateral or it can be bilateral. If it is a bilateral quenal atresia, then it's a life-threatening condition and it presents as an acute respiratory distress in neonates because they are obligate nasal breather. They can't breathe through mouth. They are obligate nasal breather. And classically, the neonate will have cyclical cyanosis which is relieved by crying because when they cry, they breathe through their mouth and placement of an appropriate oral airway. And unilateral quenal atresia present later in life uh, because, uh, because the child can breathe through one side of the nostril. So it presents later in life and it can be picked up in neonates when there is inability to pass nasogastric tube through one nasal pa uh, pa through one nasal passage now um, uh, also apart from breathing difficulty neonates will have difficulty in feeding also so for that you might have to use artificial nipples and the name is mcgovern nipples okay so this is a picture that shows bilateral quenal atresia here see the uh, quena is blocked here on both the sides and this quenal atresia is associated with various syndromes so most commonly it is associated with a syndrome called as charge syndrome now this is a short form and c stands for coloboma here h stands for heart defects a stands for atresia quena r stands for retardation of growth G stands for genital anomalies and E stands for ear abnormalities and this syndrome is due to mutation of CHD7 gene which is present on chromosome number 8. Apart from that it is associated with other craniosynostosis, craniofacial deformities, microcephaly, Cruzen syndrome, Trichocolin syndrome. Okay now let's talk about investigation. So uh, we can do find out this by doing nasal endoscopy. Apart from that, we have to do CT scan to know the extent and nature of atresia. And to rule out other abnormal anomalies, we should we can do cardiac echo, renal ultrasound, ophthalmologic examination, and audiology. Now, uh, in treatment part, we have uh, basically we have to remove the stenosed part in treatment. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do, we have to uh, remove that part. For that, we have various approaches, whether it is uh, bony uh, quenal atresia or membranous quenal atresia. So um, we have trans. We can remove it through transnasal approach. Or we can even go through the palate that is called as transpalatal approach or we can make a incision in sublabial area that is uh, between the lips and the teeth and we can go through the sublabial approach 
or we can go through the maxillary antrum that is called as transantral approach maxillary where the maxilla opens and or we can go through transeptal approach through the septum so uh, uh, these are the five approaches and if you uh, remember so the most important is transnasal approach transpalatal approach and transeptal approach so uh, see in trans in this picture i'll tell you in transnasal approach we go through the nose and we go to the nasopharynx and remove the uh, atresia and in transpalatal approach we go like this through the palate we go behind and then we uh, remove the stenosed part in sublabial approach we go uh, between the uh, lips and the gums and we make an incision there and like that we go and go towards the nasopharynx okay so these are the three approaches apart from that we have transeptal and transantral approach so what do we do in transeptal uh, transantral approach that is th going through the maxillary sinus opening and then going uh, towards the atritic part and removing that and in transeptal approach we go through the septum we elevate the mucosa of the septum we go through the septum go behind and remove the uh, stenosed part so that's about these approaches um, you need to just remember the name not the entire procedure now this is a ct scan which shows that uh, the, the, the bilateral stenosed cavity now you can see the airway is not open and both the nasal cavity are stenosed so uh, yeah apart from doing this operation after operation after we remove the stenosed part we can go for nasal stenting also so stent so this is a picture of nasal stenting here okay so th these stents can be left for six weeks after the surgery but stentings are associated with more complications because it can lead to crusting and dryness so for that regular suctioning is needed and washing of the regular nasal douching that is nasal washing is needed with the saline or nacl and uh, we can even use mitomycin C or KTP laser if at all there are granulations after removing the stenosed part. So mitomycin can be applied during the OT that avoids granulation and if at all patient has post-operative granulations then that can be removed by using KTP laser. So uh, that's all guys about this presentation just uh, the important part in this presentation is that the mixed type is the most common type and remember the clinical features remember that uh, bilateral quenal atresia is life threatening that is very important and also these syndromes are also important especially the charge syndrome is important and uh, remember these approaches at least three approaches you remember and uh, investigation investigating a quenal atresia is very easy nasal endoscopy is enough and do remember that post-operatively uh, uh, nasal stenting can be done to avoid re-stenosis so thanks a lot bye bye